So hello everyone, uh, my name is Syed Masum and um, in this presentation I'm going to be covering uh, basics of uh, Salesforce business analysis. We'll go through various topics related to Salesforce business analyst, namely if we want to look at the agenda, uh, we will be discussing the uh, what the Salesforce business analyst role is and the skill requirement for the role. Uh, we will also explore the responsibilities of the Salesforce business analyst and we will understand some of the misconceptions about Salesforce business analyst and try to clear them with uh, my understanding and uh, explanation. All right, so let's dive right into it so first of all now what is a Salesforce business analyst you must have heard this term popping up a lot um, nowadays um, Salesforce itself Salesforce is a CRM um, uh, it is also an ERP solution so it's a combination of both ERP as well as CRM um, because of the adoption rate and uh, because of the industries and uh, the capabilities of the software um, the growth and um, the features which are um, increasing um, as we speak so every day Salesforce is adding new features to the platform, uh, acquiring new companies and starting to uh, provide uh, offer solutions to different industries, um, which is which covers all sorts of organizations. So small, uh, medium size as well as large worldwide enterprise companies so all these companies when they start adopting this uh, solution for their needs um, also you know that that obviously uh, creates the need for um, you know all the different roles uh, surrounding and um, you know or um, having that knowledge of uh, Salesforce and uh, Salesforce Business Analyst was created uh, by this evolving uh, need in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, so let's look into basically what a Salesforce Business Analyst is. A Salesforce Business Analyst is a, a project-based business improvement role. Uh, business analysts help guide businesses to uh, improve business processes and uh, efficiency in Salesforce. Uh, they help elicit document and analyze requirements around business challenges and then produce data-driven solutions. Now, if we want to uh, understand this by the way of an analogy, then think of the Salesforce business analyst like an interpreter. So they are the go-to person when it comes to communication between IT and the business uh, stakeholders to ensure all involved work together to attain the best results. Um, right, so that's, that's the, basically what the definition of Salesforce BA is. And let's now look into what skills a Salesforce BA need in order to be successful so these are the skills required um, um, first and foremost every BA should possess some sort of uh, soft skills um, um, experienced BAs um, and more seasoned BAs will also be um, more uh, technical however when you are considering this as a career, then these are the skills you should uh, look into acquiring. Uh, there is a, 
a dedicated resource available for BAs to start studying about what soft skills are most important. I have tried to list some of these here. These are also some of what uh, uh, Salesforce recommends for their BAs. So needs analysis, um, eliciting requirements, business case definition, now, I won't be going too deep into uh, each of the soft skills. You can do a quick Google search and find out more about, uh, as a BA, um, what sort of need analysis techniques or eliciting requirements techniques uh, you should be uh, studying for and you should possess. Then, um, now, these are also explained in depth on IIBA's website. So if you do a Google search for International Institute for Business Analysis, then you would find their website. That's where you would go to understand what the soft skill requirements are for a successful BA. They also run a, a certification program for general BA, so uh, if you acquire the skills, um, IIBA skills, then you would be more sort of a general BA, so you don't, you would not have a specific domain or industry uh, specialization. But that's it, that, that's the best uh, place to start your career as a BA, and then. <clears throat> Salesforce is nothing but specialization. So you would introduce uh, Salesforce to your career when you uh, have worked uh, for, in an organization and on customizing or uh, you know implementing Salesforce uh, for at least one to two years. That that's what I recommend as a minimum duration you should have spent on Salesforce which will then give you these um, most important uh, Salesforce skills a BA should possess, namely uh, App Exchange. You would only understand this if you have actually um, implemented a, uh, an app from you know, the exchange. So it's not just, uh, we cannot think of App Exchange as uh, Windows uh, Store or um, Apple Store, uh, where you just buy um, apps uh, and download and install it in your phone or laptop. Uh, Salesforce App Exchange is very um, specialized area, I believe, because um, there are solutions available for uh, pretty much any business um, uh, challenge we can think of today which can be resolved um, with the help of these additional tools um, available in App Exchange. So you have to, you know, have you have to um, learn this by, you know, either following the trailhead where they would uh, make you do some exercises whereby you download the uh, app from App Exchange and install it in Salesforce. But the, it, every app in Exchange comes with uh, different requirements for uh, implementation and you have to be mindful of that. So having a little bit of exposure to this would then give you a sort of, you will then have that background that App Exchange is not just about clicking and uh, you know clicking through uh, and uh, finishing off uh, all with clicks you have to be mindful of the changes it introduces to the platform and uh, your platform itself when i say platform i'm referring to salesforce uh, platform it might require some um, readiness so you have to make some uh, changes in order to uh, accommodate prior to uh, introducing any new app to the platform and then there are automation tools they, they these are not your externally available automation tools there are uh, internal automation tools in salesforce uh, uh, which require which are complex however if you uh, 
do it once or twice. I mean, if you automate a process using Process Builder, for example, then you would have the uh, sort of that, you know, good understanding of how each of the automation tools in Salesforce works and, you know, what are the considerations you need to make when you are looking to automate a process for your uh, company or organization and the uh, uh, sort of, you know, uh, sort of like uh, when you're looking to automate the process and what are, what, what is it that it is going to affect um, system wise then how will it affect the people who will be performing who will be actors of the process and how the end result will change for example previously if you were um, the process produced uh, uh, paper prints uh, Salesforce might, you know, only allow you to print a PDF depending on the solution you adopt. Of course, there will be options to print a paper from Salesforce, but I just gave an example that the output of a process might change slightly. So you have to uh, consider all this before you automate that uh, process. So this, this is, if you uh, work uh, on this kind of uh, projects, then you would uh, know the uh, automation cycle in Salesforce end-to-end, -end, uh, which means uh, you will then be ready uh, to, you know, quickly roll out uh, automated processes uh, and understanding, implementing, and uh, training people on these new processes is crucial. As we progress uh, in this series, you will understand more. Uh, I will. I am creating this series, uh, taking a little bit of help from Trailhead as well as uh, from my own experience of running a project. So we are starting at the very basics, and then I will go more deeper into how we implement or utilize some of these uh, skills you can see here on the screen. So right, let's move on to the next slide. This is this is an excerpt from uh, Trailhead Salesforce Trailhead um, uh, website. It gives you a little bit more insight into what the recruiters uh, look for when you apply for a Salesforce BEA job. So as you can see, these are all generic uh, skills all BEAs uh, should possess uh, anyway. Um, communication, project management, organization, writing skills. Now you, you will be creating a lot of documentation. Yes, there will be standard um, documentation and training available from Salesforce, but that's very rarely used if, if, if at all uh, not used because in my experience uh, working for a couple of uh, uh, different companies, I haven't seen them using Salesforce's help documentation a lot. Uh, they would uh, rather have us, um, Salesforce BAs, uh, create our own training documentation. Um, and then BAs need to be detail-oriented, problem-solving. Of course, yes, that's what BA role uh, stands for, isn't it? So we, uh, as a BA, we will be looking into the uh, challenges of an organization and looking to, uh, of the, and, and also the, business goals and we will be looking to uh, you know list out the problems in achieving those goals and try to solve them with the help of technology and then uh, yes technical skills are uh, specialized uh, skills are also uh, important the the uh, uh, the industry the companies recruiting for this role will be looking uh, for you know at least uh, intermediate level of uh, Salesforce platform knowledge. In my opinion, um, it is slightly underestimated than what it should have been. I think general BA skills are important. However, when you uh, when you are going to be a Salesforce BA, then Salesforce platform and knowledge uh, also is equally important. Um, because if you understand the mechanics and uh, the uh, uh, 
capabilities, the features of Salesforce well, then you will be uh, achieving that, uh, you know, time to solution uh, will be uh, very uh, narrow. So you, you will quickly be able to find a suitable solution in Salesforce for any business challenge or business change you are implementing. Data analysis, of course, and that's um, not less important than other skills. Uh, however, data analysis is uh, necessary when you are in a type of a role where uh, in a company where uh, th there aren't uh, separate people doing this. Usually in large uh, organizations, you will have separate people doing business analysis uh, and separate people doing data analysis because data analysis is not uh, uh, cannot be uh, an, an, a task or an activity of a BA. It is a separate um, stream. Um, uh, many businesses are now uh, adopting this approach and employing a separate data analytics uh, person uh, to take care of this. And data management, scripting language, SQL and Python, uh, yes, they are important, but not uh, very important. I hardly have ever done any Python uh, scripting. However, in order to understand uh, an Apex uh, a program, when, there's, when the processes are highly automated, they also use some of the Apex code, then it is you know helpful to have that knowledge and uh, see as to how the uh, you know the data queries are running behind the scenes uh, so you can then you know not rely on uh, technical uh, stuff as much for some of the basic stuff like if uh, data uh, uh, is not being correctly displayed in a uh, report in a custom report for example you could quickly scan the code of that uh, custom report if there's an apex code running behind it then you know to pull some of the data from joined tables or maybe from a different sort of you know um, two different um, companies in Salesforce which are uh, joining hands uh, acquired by the other and uh, uh, for, for the time being before the acquisition and integration completes you are uh, using a temporary solution to uh, fetch data from both organization for, for example total sales of two different companies on two different Salesforce instances right uh, with the right permissions it is possible um, but yeah, let's not go too much uh, deep into it. Just as an example, why scripting languages could be helpful is that you can then, you know, um, understand the behind the scenes operations of uh, a custom code. Wonderful. Um, so these are some of the key activities a Salesforce BA would uh, perform. Uh, communication. Uh, of course, it needs to be clear and concise, open communications, and uh, also presenting and listening skills, very, very important. And uh, then requirement elicitation, requirement documentation, you, you will document the uh, requirements, um, you know, making them easy to understand for uh, any type of uh, stakeholder. Uh, they should be easy to understand, clear and concise thoughtful and easy to share so by uh, easy to share I mean they should be in a format which is easily shareable with other people for example PDF not in not in not using any specialized tool so that then it becomes difficult you have to undermine a lot of security uh, policies of the company in order to share that information or people would need access to the tool which is not always possible for the IT to facilitate. In those cases, then it makes sense to uh, use a more sort of generic uh, collaboration tool, which is available as an example, uh, Confluence. So if you store your documentation uh, on Confluence, 
uh, every employee uh, pretty much will have access to this uh, common uh, sort of uh, you know the depo uh, document depository repository so this <coughs> So, um, other than that, uh, you will analyze everything that you have you have uh, gathered. So you, you you gather requirements from different stakeholders. You analyze them, then you convert these requirements uh, into uh, your uh, guide uh, for uh, facilitating solutions. So. You, you, your analysis will tell you from your uh, if you have had uh, good exposure to Salesforce, then you already would know once you uh, you know produce your initial um, so, sort of uh, deliverables, uh, whatever they, it could be. It could be a process map, for example. Uh, you are looking to uh, automate a process, so you will obviously start by creating an as is uh, process map and then once you look at the process map you would already be uh, building that uh, solution uh, uh, from your exposure to salesforce and knowledge you will already know as to you know what automation tool in salesforce you are going to be using to automate this process and you uh, obviously you have arrived at you will identify these options uh, arrive at a solution um, possibly by dis discussing with the stakeholders and then you would embark on the implementation implementation is a very uh, key milestone in any uh, salesforce um, project and uh, because that's where uh, you your project could uh, uh, you know um, really uh, face a uh, scope creep or it could uh, make your and your stakeholders life easier or difficult so your choice of solution should be such that uh, it involves less and less customization to the platform and using more and more available features and uh, uh, tools in Salesforce which is which is the safest way of implementing any of the uh, Salesforce uh, projects end of the uh, cycle then you would uh, perform testing testing obviously if you are automating a process for example then you would test the process is working um, end to end um, desired uh, with uh, you know uh, required input and uh, it's producing desired output so that's what you have to uh, test the new uh, implementation for and also you would uh, trace these uh, the, the uh, process trace the uh, implementation back to the requirements uh, presented to the stakeholders deliver training where necessary uh, create documentation um, I always try and keep one uh, retrospective in the end of any uh, delivery so we meet for a quick feedback session and uh, we try to use these learnings from one implementation into the next one uh, moving on um, some of the common misconceptions today about Salesforce BA since it is a, a not as new but a very new sort of career option the Salesforce business analyst uh, need to be super technical um, yes Salesforce knowledge is um, uh, important but yeah do not let that stop you from um, becoming a Salesforce BAU uh, with the generic IIBA uh, BA skills uh, you can you know start learning about the Salesforce platform and if your company is offering you to work on as Salesforce, uh, any of the Salesforce projects as a BA, then I would uh, immediately, you know, grab that opportunity, and uh, that, that's what will give you more exposure to Salesforce platform. Uh, second misconception we have is Salesforce BAs should not do configuration on the platform. Um, uh, this also uh, is uh, a misconception which should be, uh, you know. Avoided 
And when when you are aspiring to become a Salesforce BA, you uh, depending on the uh, knowledge and exposure you have had uh, to Salesforce, yes, you can. Uh, some there could be some of the changes business uh, requires, uh, which you uh, can handle yourself. For example, there sometimes would be a requirement to um, add an extra option to a pick list. Uh, uh, on sales related opportunities then that's so if you have um, appropriate uh, access uh, your profile allows for uh, this customization then you can go ahead and add an additional option to this pick list so uh, likewise you know you do not have to always involve uh, salesforce developers for any change a business requires then third misconception we have is Salesforce business analysts are only needed after a project kicks off now BS in general are um, you know involved right from the um, where the project uh, right from the stage when the project uh, did not even exist so business was trying to discuss trying to uh, you know think of a possible change right from even before uh, it came down to being a Salesforce driven project uh, that's when BAs are involved um, in the discussions to see if uh, it is something we can achieve with the help of uh, Salesforce let's move on to the next one okay there you go thank you very much for um, listening to this presentation i uh, welcome your suggestions uh, and feedback to this i hope that this presentation has been helpful i will try to upload more content about salesforce bas if you're looking to start your career in salesforce ba then look no further i wish you all the best and uh, see you in the next one bye